uh, uh, um, big reveal, everyone. Uh, Victor haircut. I cut Victor's hair. Hope Welcome cut my to Vic hair. And Hope. Let us know how it looks. <laughs> no I simping. Do I don't want to see any fucking simping in the comments. Don't simp for Hope on this. Be honest. Oh, I thought well, they I think were you did simping a good job. for you. No, simping for you. <laughs> because you cut my hair. Don't They're going to simp, simp for, for you. <laughs> Don't simp for me either. But I mean, like, it's nobody, a given. They're not going to simp for me. Nobody in the comments simp for me. Even though I have plenty of simps. Anywho. I was going to say, they're always asking for shirtless <laughs> victory. No true. one's simping for me. That's true. I don't think they care about you at all. I don't think that's the problem here. <laughs> Anywho. We just watched uh, some anime. Did we watch seasonal anime? Yeah, so fucking full disclosure, um, we are subscribed to Mother's Basement, <laughs> mostly for <laughs> shit posting. We do not like him. Mostly to rage. Um, I'm sure you, you could probably guess. Uh, there's probably some new fans here that aren't used to uh, us shitting on Mother's Basement, but like it's... <laughs> Uh, I've met him personally, you know, nothing against, uh, I think you're the, just uh, mad the man himself. Than yes, you. he's, he's just so damn tall and he just <laughs> has no chin and it just drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so we were watching Mother's Basement video of, uh, his recommendations for fall anime. Right. And like, we were kind of like, I hadn't really heard shit about the fall season so far. Um, nothing really stood out to us as that interesting. There were some things that, that we were familiar with that, that, uh, we kind of weren't checking out. So, whatever. If people, people will talk about it if it's good and then we can check it out later. I mean, here's the thing. When you've been in the anime game for as long as we have, mm. you get a little jaded, you know? Posh. You look at the seasonal chart and you go, yeah, ah, yeah none of this. It all seems like the same shit I've seen before. There's nothing here that that really wows me, that sparks yeah. my interest. It's just all all I want to watch is Yashihime. Exactly. So we, so we decide to watch Yashihime <laughs> and Higurashi with no one gives half of a shit about at all. Like we do. Yeah. Very low on the giving a shit chart. <laughs> very a very Vic and Hope move. Yeah, so we're like, all right, and so we watch uh, Mother's Basement's video on on the top ten anime he's looking at, which are mostly dog shit, but there are a couple of them that looked interesting, <laughs> so we checked the them rough. out. There are some turds in the rough. <laughs> you you can't argue to me that all ten of his picks looked like they were quality in any to way. To be fair, I don't <laughs> even think Jeff thought they were all quality. Yeah, because he would be like, this show is fine and it's like okay if you're telling me it's fine then it's probably really boring yeah. or really mediocre he just won't go against the grain with any uh non-consensus opinion that's what you're here for is for non-consensus opinions hopefully you're here because <laughs> we are the ben shapiro of the anime <laughs> analysis community we're here to hit you with the facts and the logic the facts and the logic <laughs> anywho so that's what led us to checking out some more animes because they they looked promising <laughs> So, uh, first on our list today is Jujutsu Kaisen! <laughs> Which a couple of our, uh, followers did, yeah. uh, recommend that we should try. So, credit where credit is due. Uh, that was kind of recommended to us ahead of time. Yeah. And uh, the, the concept's not so bad. It's one of your big Shonen Jump boys. It's, you know, it is the Shonen formula, but yeah. with a spooky twist. Because it's like, you know, when we were looking at the fall anime chart, it was like, oh, this is a, a Shonen Jump thing. It's either going to be good or it's going to be boring, you know? It's, you know, you know what you're getting into. And I would say after watching the first three episodes, it is exactly what it looks like. And yeah. it has not surprised me. Any, like there's yeah. some, some great well animated moments, but it's Definitely. like, again, I don't want to put great animated moments on this pedestal. Like it automatically makes something good when you're looking at 20 seconds out of a 23 minute episode, you know? But I mean, like overall Jujutsu Kaisen does look good. Like it's, yeah. a, it, I think it's MAPPA. Yeah, it's MAPPA. Um, it has a good aesthetic. It does aesthetic. look yeah. solid throughout, and it has some really cool cuts. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as aesthetics go and the overall presentation, it's really solid. Yeah. I just don't want to, like, ever recommend something on the basis of, like, unless it's, like, Mob Psycho, where it really goes ham, you know? But, like, how often do you get a Mob yeah, Psycho, you, you don't. Know? But it's, like, I don't want to say, like, oh, the animation is stellar, comparing it to something like that, when it's, like, well, it has some I mean, awesome fight scenes, cool. and it looks solid, and, it, and it's cool, you know? It's just, like, it's it's not, it's not like, rocking my world in a way where I'd be, like, you have to watch this because the animation is stellar, you know? I mean, I appreciate that they obviously 
the studio cares about this show and they yeah. want to make it look cool and they're doing a really good job of crafting an extremely competent, well put together show. Yeah. And to compare it to like God of High School, which I actually finished, you didn't finish it. I finished it because I was uh, working with Cantent. Go check out Cantent, uh, the other channel. But um, yeah, so God of High School was one where it was like, it had these really stellar like animation moments. But it was ultimately like, well, the story wasn't there, so who yeah. cares at the end of the day, you know? And I think Jujutsu Kaisen's getting off to a better start story-wise by kind of, like, really following the shonen formula in a way where, like, God of High School was a very condensed, trimmed-down shonen formula where they just cut everything out. <laughs> and so you ended up with kind of a, a husk. And this is like, okay, this is a shonen jump property. It's, it's going in. It's doing exactly what you expect it to do. It's introducing the characters and introducing all the mechanics of the world in the in the the pacing that you expect from one of these in a modern day yeah. anime, which is like it feels exactly like watching Boku no Hero Academia. It feels exactly like watching uh fucking Kimetsu no Yaiba in the early episodes where you're like, all right, episode one, we're learning about the main character. We're sitting down. Oh, we're learning. Oh, there's mechanics of this world. Okay, we're our premise is there. Then it's like episode two. All right, we're learning kind of how these things work. You're introduced to Kakashi Sensei, and like, <laughs> and I and I know we're not really gonna get anywhere super interesting for ten to thirteen episodes. Yeah. But like, what they've introduced so far, it's it's not making me cringe, and it's not making me want to die. So that's <laughs> good. That's I a mean, big compliment. I think you're <laughs> you're being pretty like you're being kind of critical of it, but I think simultaneously, I don't want people to come away with the thought that like. We didn't like it. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm coming like, at this from I feel from like the... it is. It's really competent. The characters are not annoying. They're not obnoxious. Yeah. You're like, okay, I get everyone's deal. I get what they're about. Main boy is pretty likable, pretty fun. I mean, like, he's basically the boy from Fire Force, but, like, yeah. less spurgy, I guess. Um, but he's cute. He's cool. He's, yeah. not, he's fine. There's some fucking cool monsters animated here. I really like the cut where... Uh, in the first episode, the paranormal club summons those demons by, or curses yeah. by unwrapping the talisman, and the demon's, like, coming through the hall while the the a girl is hiding behind that little yeah. section, and he's, like, asking what time it is, and she's just, like, shitting her pants, like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Like, I feel like that was really a, yeah. a nice, I mean, he's a charming character. Uh, little bit there. So there's a lot of atmosphere. Yeah. A lot of thought goes into the creature design, and I feel like that's pretty well done. Yes. I like the way they animated uh, spiky-haired boys' dogs, yeah. the wolves. <laughs> the wolves I they are got you. I like that. Oh, and I like that that's they cool. like they fucking ate up the the curse. Yeah, they ate the curse, and, and yeah. then there's like they're in the foreground while the characters are in the background having a conversation, and they're just eating the curse. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, dogs. Yeah, it's really well done. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to harsh it. There's a, there's a place for shonen in this world. Oh, yeah. Like, I think competent shonen, especially in this day and age where Fire Force exists. Yeah. I'm just, like, com like comparing it to other shonen and, and calling it a very by-the-number shonen is not a compliment or a diss in any way. It's yeah. just what it is. Like, it is... By the numbers, shonen. It feels exactly like watching any other shonen anime at the beginning. It's just you're trading out aesthetics and you're trading out characters, and these are aesthetics and characters that I like. You yeah. know, I do enjoy it. Yeah. Like I would rather watch this than Fire Force, which I think is I horrendously like boring. <laughs> I'd rather watch this than Kimetsu no Yaiba, which I found very juvenile and boring, and just like I didn't really yeah. care. And welcome shitty comments in the, in our comment Hi. section. Welcome but, like, to round two of hating Vic and Hope. But I see, I synced a lot of shonen anime, and so I get very bored very quickly, yeah. especially with all the fucking Mary Sue main characters that we get in this fucking world, where they're all the same copy and paste dude. I cannot perceive a difference between the dude from Kimetsu no Yaiba and the kid from Boku no Hero Academia. They're the same they're thing. They're all ultra good boys. Like, you know? yeah. He's and just so, so good. He's Jujutsu such a good Kaisen, boy. I mean, he is a super good boy. <laughs> he's a super good boy. But he's kind of funny, and so that works as a benefit, and he's kind of a dipshit, and I I like dipshits, you know, <laughs> but he's not a, he's not a dipshit in like a, in like a, in the same way yeah. that like a Deku is a dipshit, you know? Yeah. The like really dense kind of way. Yeah. He's not a. Like he does seem like he has an aspect of being able to perceive other characters' yeah. emotions and know kind of what's going on with them. He's not as like, 
Yeah, as, as and I dense. like that he doesn't make a big deal out of anything. Yeah, you know? and he kind of takes takes shit with a grain of salt. He he eats this thing and he becomes a power. And he's, he's just, just like, like oh, oh, whoa, okay, right, yeah. like yeah, that's fun. He's not like over dramatizing. He's not a little bitch. Yeah, <laughs> nothing is like a big fucking emotional deal. Which yeah. in this case, I could understand how you'd be a little bit traumatized, you know, yeah. with everything that that happens to him, but. You know, he yeah. takes it like a fucking champ, dude. He's just like, you know what? I gotta honor the memory of my dead grandpa, and I gotta fucking... He knows he's gonna, like... So his deal is, once they collect all these cursed parts, they're, they're they're like, listen, you can either... We can murder you now, or you can collect all these cursed parts yeah. uh, and, like, hold this, uh, this curse in you, and then we'll murder you. And he's like, yeah, all right, yeah. well, at least I can save some people, so that's cool. And I'm sure that will evolve throughout the story, but yeah. I appreciate his ability to be like, well, I'm gonna die either way, so I may as well uh, be a good boy. And it's like, you know, we've got the tropes. He's He's got to get all the Shikon jewels so he can stop <laughs> yeah. Naraku, which is a fox that's inside of his stomach that he's had since birth. <laughs> and, like, his parents are mysterious things that we don't... They they were some kind of... Yeah, they were Jujutsu masters or whatever. They're not in the picture. We have Kakashi Sensei. He's laying it down for them. He's aloof and, and, fun, and, and funny and, like, oh, how boy. powerful really is he? I don't know. Mysterious. You've got Sasuke, but I like that they kind of take the piss out of Sasuke, you know? Um, the girl I, I like, she's kind of, she's, she's got the masculine energy to her. She's that, definitely, that, yeah. Like, she feels like she might be able to pull her own weight more than your average shonen girl, but then they never, know. they never do. They yeah. never pull their weight. Like, Realistic. because her powers are already very grounded in reality. And, like, she's she has, like, this country-style sort of, like, She's you a know, very old-fashioned yeah. uh, curse kind of style. Curse with powers. Like the straw dolls and the yeah. nails and hammer and the whole, you know. Which means she's at high risk of becoming completely irrelevant in any important battles. <laughs> um, but, you know, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. But it, it's a fun shonen. Yeah. It, you, you get what you see. And it's not boring. That's uh, the best thing I can say is it's not boring. It has some cool fights. It has some fun characters. And the ending theme. The ending theme is fucking amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> that that really hooked me in when the I saw steeds. the ending theme. And it's just like the hilarious dance. Like the fucking main guy comes out and he's got this man purse and he's like <laughs> dancing and you're like, this is fucking awesome. I love this. <laughs> All right, I'm They're on board. They're just having a good time. You got me. They're cool boys having a funky, cool time. Yeah. It's great. And it would be nice to have a shonen that I'm into that's popular and people talk about it and wow. like I can give a shit, you know? Well, I mean, everybody knows that we just enjoy being contrary for yeah. the sake of being contrary and not because we genuinely don't think that whatever's popular is good. <laughs> yeah, it's just not scratching that, that itch. But like we like horror stuff, demon -y stuff. You know, that's a long... But yeah, I mean, I know, Kimetsu no Yaiba has those things. Yeah, and so does not Fire Force. not the same, but Kimetsu no Yaiba doesn't have Yusuke, you know? Yeah. It, does, it doesn't have, like, the, the characters to hook me in. They're just like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> like, I like the horror elements of Kimetsu no Yaiba. That's cool. Yeah. I, I see that and I go, oh, I kind of want to watch this. This looks cool. And then I watch it and I go, I, uh, I'm just ah, I just, oh, I'm so I bored. I, I don't bored. care. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I, not to shit. I don't think that's a bad series in any way. It's just no, what we watched. Just it was just not like. not for us. I was like, man, I wish I were fucking 12 like, again and I would love this so goddamn oh, yeah. much. Yeah, as far as being a shonen, I'm. Yeah. Kimetsu no Yaiba does a great job. The anime, of course, is gorgeous. Yeah. It's just. I can't. It's not for me. Anywho, this isn't about that. This isn't about This isn't about no that. <laughs> this is about new anime. <laughs> Out with the old, in with the new. So, Victor, would you recommend Jujutsu Kaisen? As of three episodes, yes. If you're looking for, if you want to feel like a, a young man enjoying a shonen again, and it's been a <laughs> while, and you, you want to have some of the rust sort of polished off of your old shake, shitty shake heart, you know? Shake off the rust, Shake boys. off the rust. You want to you wanna feel something again? Yeah, check it out. I can't wait for it to be on Adult Swim and to be like the yeah. new Bleach. It feels like Bleach, you know, to like a, to to a Naruto, extent, yeah. like... You've got Boku no Hero Academia, which is your Naruto, and then this is, like, your Bleach. Yeah. In terms of, like, the modern-day anime sphere, I guess. That seems fair. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, Hi. next up, what was the show called? We watched a couple episodes of uh, Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle. <laughs> Yeah. 
So, Victor, what'd you think of Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle? I mean, obviously, it's not my personal cup of tea, <laughs> per se. But this is, has its own appeal that is kind of like, you know, it's it's doing its own thing. It's doing its own thing quite well. Yes. Um, I find it enjoyable and, and relaxing and cute and funny. Um, I do think it's quite comical that even within the first episode it's already getting kind of tired of its own premise in, in repeating cycles and I'm like that's just that's just what we're in for. Yeah. I don't know why this isn't like a five minute episode kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a good adaptation. I have fucking no idea how this is gonna be like 13 episodes long. I feel like I'm almost satisfied with two episodes. Like I've yeah. I have consumed, I'm like alright cool, so for instance I get it, I like it cool, I fucks with that. She's cute She's getting stuff to make a bed. Awesome. <laughs> Sick. I love it. <laughs> How much of this are we actually going to watch is my yeah. question. <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely agree. Um, I love the aesthetics of the show. I love the color palette. I love the design of the princess. I think her outfit is super fucking cute and she's yes. super cute. Um, and it's, you know, they, they play her up as being a very cute character. And when she does cute things, you're like, aww. And I do love the, like, cast of characters that are in this show. Mm -hmm. I like the demons and the yeah. demon lord and the dipshit hero that's wandering around out there somewhere. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. But I agree that it is the kind of thing where you watch a couple episodes and you're like, eh, it's funny. Yeah. But I get it, you know? You feel like you kind of... I think this is the kind of thing that maybe you'd be better off watching every once in a while. Just watch an episode when you yeah. want to have a little pick-me-up. Because I feel like one episode satiated yeah. my thirst for this. But I feel like if I left it for a little while and then came back and watched another episode on a day where I was just kind of farting around in the yeah. house, I'd be like, yeah. This could be nice. a good, like, actual weekly follow where you're not binging it. Because, like, <laughs> if you're binging it, you're going to be like... Binging it, I think, would be tough. Yeah. Um, it could be something great um, to put on at bedtime eventually. Like, oh, once yeah. it's all out, just put it on at bedtime so and you, you will fall asleep and be like, ah, oh, sleep sounds. <laughs> I love the sleep sounds. Um, I mean, but it's got some good comedy. Yeah. It's like, it gets to the point where, like you said, uh, the, the the show seems to be aware that it's repeating its cycle. And so they introduce the element of her going into harm's way and dying yes. over and over and over and being brought back to life by the uh, the demon clergyman who uh, yeah. who presides over the castle. And he's like, why do you keep doing this? Stop it. And she's just kind of like, eh, I don't know. And then she ends up dying again. And you're like, all right, that's funny. I like that. She's a great uh, comedic character in the way that she has a very focused motivation and it is like a selfish brat who will stop at nothing to get what she wants. Like when she goes into the uh, the council meeting to get the sleep potion. Yeah. <laughs> and they're and all she's like, just like... She comes in, she's kind of like bows at them and they're just like, hey. <laughs> she just looks at them like, she takes their little potion and she starts walking away and they're like, we need that. And she's like, oh, all right. <laughs> is this anime the perfect demonstration of female privilege? Because she can get away with whatever she wants well, they don't let just because she's it. cute. She can't take, she doesn't take it. I thought she did take no, it. No, she, she, she yeah. gives it back. Because <laughs> they're like, you can't, you can't amazing. take that. But I love that, the, the way she interacts with people and just like, the, she's like, no, it's mine. <laughs> it's just like nodding and stuff, like nonverbal communication. Just totally, great. yeah, weaponizes the fact that she's very cute. They're good at having her do the funniest, cutest possible thing in any situation. Yeah. Which is great. When she breaks the windshield to get the 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 wind thing off of it so she can sleep on the air. And then they're just talking about how like it's so important. They're literally, like, across the hall talking about how important this relic is, and then she just takes the remnants of the wheel windshield of the shield and ties it to a pillow and throws it back into the <laughs> fucking treasure chest. She's like, fuck it. And it's just like, eh, this is trash. <laughs> Got it. You're like, oh, cool. She keeps, like, murdering the, the sheet guys. Just yes. Just fucking decapitating them to take their bodies the as sheets, and you're like, alright, that's pretty funny. I do like that. It's cute like and fun and enjoyable. I hope it, like, I imagine to to reach 13 episodes, it's going to have to start focusing on some of the other characters and maybe, I like, so. having them do funny... Maybe, like, make the focus of an episode about what's-this-fuck demon lord and, like, you know, the girls kind of doing things in the background almost and, like, influencing it that way. I hope it kind of branches out and tries different things. But it's only two episodes so far, so who knows? Right. You know, maybe it'll go fucking completely off the rails with its comedy. 
but it's promising. It's funny, you know. I like it. Yeah, it's enjoyable. It's very cute. It's pretty funny. It's pretty chill. It's been a while since we watched anything like that that we enjoyed yeah. that much. I don't usually <laughs> like stuff like this. Yeah. So, uh, pretty neat. Pretty good. Nostalgic in a way. Yeah. All right. So next, we fucking watched motherfucking Akudama Drive. Man, this one was a fucking okay. This is like <laughs> this is something. It's it's like I don't want to come off too hype about this because I do think it's gonna suck. I think it's gonna be total trash. Yeah. It let me elaborate on that before you went. Well, you gotta have all right. Calm down. I don't feel the like there's gonna be a lot of defenders of uh, Akudama Drive in the comments. <sighs> Perhaps it's it's one of those. It's I mean it's got the anime original syndrome written all over it. Yeah. Where it's like it's so comes out the gate swinging hard with, like, aesthetics and just, like, music. And it's just, like, so fucking good. All of it's so good. But then it's, like, the actual premise that it's building on is very fucking thin. Very thin. Which is how these always go. Very fucking thin premise. Very unoriginal. But, man, is it just... Come, it's just so <laughs> beautiful and like awesome and insane. But you do gotta watch yourself, cause uh, you you might you might cut yourself on that edge right there. Yeah, it's quite edgy. <laughs> it's definitely like, man, this is like the for the fucking hot topic zoomers. Like they're they're getting their show. They're getting their new Tokyo Ghoul. It's like a, it is fucking awesome. Complete with a, a white haired boy who uh, becomes obsessive over a main girl and licks blood off of her face. So yeah. that's how you know you're getting back to your roots. But I love that it's like maximum edge turned up to 11, but also not self-serious in any way. Mm. It really just does not give a fuck about having a serious tone. It, it really is off the wall. Like from the beginning, you know what you're getting into Definitely. when it's just like shenanigans. Uh, I like the main girl and her twilight sparkle hair. She uh, does she's have very cute. I like her, her her thigh highs and she's very much like um, my fucking 17 year old dream girl. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most like 17 year old anime of all time. It's just like it's 16. Pretty, it's pretty 17 year old. Plus, can we mention that Knuckles is in this anime? Knuckles is in the <laughs> anime. Literally Knuckles. This is a character that is Knuckles. <laughs> we'll put that up in a so fucking bit on screen. fucking good. But it's like, but it gets me excited. I'm like really excited to watch <laughs> this because I'm, and it's it's already as of like episode two going in that direction where I'm like, okay, I can't be disappointed by this because I know exactly what it is. Silly as fuck. Like it's, it's got no pretensions about it of of seeming like it's about something deeper than what it is, which is just goofy nonsense. And it seems like it's really trying to have fun with itself, uh, yeah. and I think that's good. Um, the opening theme is a opening great indicator of really that. Cool. Where it's like super, super punk rock, and you're like, all right, I get the aesthetic they're going for. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. They're just having fun with this. It's super pulpy, yeah. obviously. Super pulpy, super edgy, um, hilarious um, censorship right now. Oh my god, I haven't seen censor censorship like that since, like, Terraformars. Or, like, episode one of JoJo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, back when JoJo had, like, a bunch of gore. I, I guess it still does and still does get censored, but it's, like... Yeah! Like, I remember episode yeah. one of JoJo just yes, being, right. like, black bars Whole everywhere. Whole halves of the screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got some of that hilarious censorship. Um... But it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Let's talk about the actual fucking premise of this. Because this is like, when we watch the trailers for our, our seasonal impressions thing, the trailer is so not representative of what this is. Because it looked like it was going to be like all. a serious psychopath kind of drama. But this is like off the walls heist anime. This is <laughs> this is kind of like, it's maybe based in the societal setup of psychopaths, but like totally yeah. like... No logic, no real consistent rules. It's like, yeah. in the way that the main characters are criminals who are labeled, you know, Akudama, yeah. who, you know, have done all this shit and have all this jail time tied to their name. Yeah. So but it's, beyond that... It's Psychopaths meets Suicide Squad, quite literally, go, yeah. because it is just the plot of Suicide Squad, where it's like, you've got all these criminals... Well, they're getting paid, though. They put collars around their neck that'll blow their head up, but that is, is literally what Suicide Squad was. Yeah, that is literally So it's Suicide like, Squad. it is Suicide Squad. Already vastly better than Suicide Squad, in my yeah, opinion, because Suicide Squad <laughs> is low. not fun like this is fun. Um, 
But yeah, so there are a, a bunch of criminals all with their own specialty. You've got your your healer doctor lady who uh, at some point like gets her head cut off and she can well, sew it back on. Yeah, her slid. throat slid open and her hand cut off. Yes. And she she can self medicate. She, she, she just, just says, like sews oh, I can it back self-medicate. together. Self medicate. I'm like, I don't think stitching your throat closed <laughs> is self medicating. But, but like, all right. that's the <laughs> level of like non serious magic like, we're dealing the with. The way they introduce her is she's riding on the train and a dude has a heart attack and she's like, it's okay. I'm a doctor. He just needs surgery. And so she murders everyone else on the train and just does surgery on the dude and yes. leaves him on the ground there. And you're like, all right. She doesn't give a fuck, and she's quite hilarious. It looks like total trash. <laughs> oh my god. Tits out, mm-hmm. like, very funny outfit. Yeah, and the the main girl meets uh, the driver guy. So they're, you Courier. know... Courier. There's, there's the heist gimmicks. There's there's the, the medic. He's the, yeah, the courier. He's a delivery boy, and he rides the fucking Batmobile cycle. <laughs> and this is a motorcycle that shoots Attack on Titan wires out from the front, and he, like, the uses it to grapple around the city. Gear. It's... It's madness, and it's hilarious, and it's used in the most hilarious ways possible. It also has a giant laser beam. It's like yes, his... It has a plasma cannon in the front. Yeah, <laughs> it's course. his thing. It's his motorcycle. You've got the hacker who just, like, does hilarious hacking things all the time and just, like, will, like, create a techno orb and do a thing, and it hacks a bus, and the bus comes to them, and it's, like, just nonsense hacking. You know, Doesn't care at all. Child prodigy hacker. You know what it is. Yeah, then you've got a hoodlum. Well, Hoodlum <laughs> accidentally ends up yeah. joining the fray. He has no skills whatsoever, but he's, he's the uh, Joker. Yeah, he's the he literally looks like the <laughs> Joker. And then you've got Knuckles. Here I come, rougher than the rest of them, the best of them, tougher than leather. You can call me Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my muscles. I'm hard as nails. It ain't hard to tell. I break them down whether they solid or frail. <laughs> the brawler. Yeah, he's the brawler, and he's just he's the muscle. He's real strong. Yeah. Knuckles. <laughs> like Sonic, um, I don't chuckle. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Cutthroat. And Cutthroat, yeah, the sociopath. The yeah, that's yeah. Basically, he's real good at cutting people's throats. Yeah. So in episode one, the heist team is assembled uh, by a robotic cat who puts the collars on them, and yes. then you've got main girl who is uh, what was she her is name? Swindler. Swindler, because she was like. She she ordered some takoyaki and and she didn't have money to pay for it because they only took cash and not credit cards. But uh, the the driver guy had met up with her and he dropped a coin on the ground. She tried to give it back and he was like, uh, "Picking up a coin from the ground is bad luck. I'm not gonna take that shit." And so she's <laughs> holding the coin and, and the old lady's uh, wanting her to uh, pay, pay for, for the, the takoyaki. takoyaki. She's like, "I don't have any money." And then she refuses to give her the coin that she picked up because she has to return it to its owner because she's a good girl. And so she gets arrested. <laughs> and, <laughs> And she gets sentenced because they were like, you had money you on had you. You had money and you refused to pay. That makes you a swindler. Yeah. And so that's how she gets roped up in all this because she's in jail when all this shit goes down and she ends up part of the group. I love that premise. It's a hilarious they setup. They should have called this anime Swindler's List. Swindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was that was a funny touch. It's pretty oh. good. I like that. And my favorite part about this is that... uh takes place in Osaka, which is very yes. important to the setting, which I'm going to explain, because the setting is very interesting. Um, will it go beyond the surface of interesting? I don't know, but it is a, it is a hilarious, interesting setting it to me. It is an interesting setting, that's for sure. Because uh, it takes place in Osaka. We instantly recognize the icon- iconography, because we went to Osaka last year, and it was dope! <laughs> and we got takoyaki, and it was mediocre! Yay! Because it's like we went to touristy takoyaki. Don't want to get into all that, but... uh. <laughs> So it was very funny that they're in, like, Dotonbori getting yeah, takoyaki because we were just there. So they, they're in, like, neo Dotonbori. Yes. And apparently some time ago, um, the people of the Kanto region, if you guys don't know, Kanto is where Tokyo is. It's it's north of Osaka. Osaka's in the Kansai region. And the only way to get from Osaka to Tokyo is from the Shinkansen, the awesome bullet train that... You take from Osaka to it's, Tokyo, yeah. <laughs> and it's a three-hour journey, a and we boy. we took that journey, and it was awesome. We sure did. Um, and a little Japanese man tried to have a conversation with me while you were in the bathroom, and I <laughs> failed miserably at speaking with him. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, adorable Japanese man. I so anyways, you. Um, I guess uh, the people of Kanto nuked Osaka, 
and yes. and this is new Osaka built on the ruins of old Osaka. And, like, they treat it like the propaganda, because you learn this from a propaganda video explaining, uh, like, the history of the city mm. in the in the Shinkansen in this world. <clears throat> yes. and, and the people of Kanto nuked Osaka, but then they rebuilt it. And so it's like, <laughs> there are heroes. Okay. Somehow they nuked us, yet there are heroes, which feels like a an allegory to the United States with how we nuked Japan. How we literally nuked Japan. And then, Japan like, twice. yeah, we rebuilt Japan and we helped them get where they are now, but we did nuke them. Twice. Don't treat us like we're good guys. So, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, it feels like an allegory to how Japan sees America, you know. And uh, and that's interesting. Will it go any deeper than that? I have no fucking idea. But, uh, so the people worship the Shinkansen because it's the only way to get out of, um, uh, um, of, of, Kansai, yeah. Osaka. Yeah. It's the only way to get out of Osaka and go to Kanto, which yeah. I guess is like utopia, because apparently Osaka is <laughs> surrounded that's where by the rich uh, people are. yeah, and Osaka is surrounded by like nuclear Armageddon, basically. Yes, there's like a hellscape in between uh, yeah. Kansai and Kanto that is unlivable. Yeah, and so the Shinkansen like has this magical force field around it. It's like that an aura borealis. Yeah. <laughs> follows the Shinkansen. And it helps it travel through the uh, the Forbidden Zone. And so the people, like, worship it as, like, oh, the gateway out of here, uh, which is, like, deities. extremely exclusive to only people who, like, qualify to ride it or whatever. Yeah. So it's, you know, big, big metaphors, big allegory, but it's also fucking ridiculous, and it seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun, and the, the team's goal right now is to... Uh, like to rob the attack it, rob it, hijack it. They want to get it. the gear. They want to yeah. get the good shit. The loot, the loot they're transporting mm. in the in the Shinkansen. Mm. Yeah, but like the show is fucking off the walls absurd. It's very self aware of its like. It has an interesting balance where obviously there's a lot of exposition to give about this world and this yes. setting, and it does this thing where like. It'll go from a crazy scene, and then it'll slow down for exposition, and then it will find whatever excuse it can (laughs) to do fucking something random to get you out of that. Like, it knows that it's a crazy show, and it it does not have the attention span to keep you looking at something boring for too long, and it wants to get you back into action as soon as possible. So it'll feel like they're having a conversation, and then, like, the... So there's, there's a sequence of events that happens in episode two. Where, like, they're they're having a conversation in the area where they left off from episode one, and then they're like, it's not safe here, we gotta go somewhere else. And so they go somewhere else, and there's, like, they kill a bunch of people, and then they're talking there, and they're like, we need to get a bus. And so they, like, do this hijack scene, they get a bus, and then they're talking <laughs> on the bus, and then it's like, all of a sudden... The bus is well, like malfunctioning. Is like, he, he's like, oh, he's looking at the red outside, yeah. and then he sees red inside because there's these buttons, and he starts hitting all the red buttons in the bus, <laughs> which causes the bus to go into hyperspeed, which then crashes the bus into this huge hotel. Yeah, and so they crash into the huge hotel, which was like this hilarious <laughs> sequence, and now they're just having an exposition di- dialogue hotel, scene in the hotel, in the royal like, suite, and then th- these like secret military police busted to try to kill them. Yeah, the executioners. And they have, like, this badass fight scene in the hotel. And it's, like, just exposition intercut with insane scenes because they know they have to keep going back and forth. And they're like, we can't have it be boring. It can't be boring. Keep keep throwing action scenes in. (laughs) Which I like because then it's not boring and it's just (laughs) insane. It's just wacky shit (laughs) happening all the time. So I'm hoping it keeps that up of just, like, wacky shit happening randomly all the time. It's sort you know? of like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of fun. It has an Just awesome uh, banging soundtrack with a lot of jazz influences and shit like that, which I really enjoy. Um, awesome backgrounds and designs and yeah. shit just fucking, it's just cool exploding soundtrack. all the time. Cool set, uh, cool, you know, back, background design. Yeah, cool I will say I, I won't give it too much credit because I do think it's the kind of thing that's like, heavily relying on light filters yes. and shit like that Definitely. to sort of make it look a lot nicer than it really is in a lot of the slower scenes, which it does very effectively. So it is, you know... But I mean, if if you're clever enough to do that to work around your yeah. time constraints or your budget or whatever it is, then, like, that's you've done yeah. a good job. And they do it to an end that is, like, very aesthetic and, like, going for a very stylized approach. So it's... I appreciate that in the way that it's, like, you know, it's not absolutely stellar animation and backgrounds all the time they mask it with creative effects and lighting to get around the parts where they would normally have to like sacrifice on budget and time you know 
I think it's an interesting technique they use to keep it looking good so that they can have these crazy cityscape shots and, like, introduce new buildings all the time. We get a cityscape with Osaka Castle, like, Neo Osaka Castle, and, like, all this crazy shit, all these awesome landmarks and stuff that are definitely, like, you know, images traced over and, like, but <laughs> it's very aesthetically pleasing and very, cool. and very hyper-detailed, which is very nice yes. um, and greatly appreciated. Lots and lots of fun, and I hope it continues to be off the wall madness and lots of fun and never take itself seriously at all. And hopefully, it will just be a fun 13 episode heist anime that fucking doesn't drop the ball, hopefully. But it very <laughs> I guess well we'll could. See. Reminds me of what was that anime with the fucking the Zodiac and um, they were all trying to kill each other or whatever? Fuck. It was like a death game. That's another like Kaisen. Yeah, some kind of fucking Kaisen. That was another one where it's like people were really hype about it after the first couple episodes, and then I never heard anything about it. Yeah, that's like, because the ending ended. was yeah. kind of lame. So I imagine it it's probably out. gonna be like that, where in it just like opinion. overstays its welcome. No one really yeah. finishes it or talks about it afterwards. It's not like a legendary anime. This might, it, this will probably go down that road. Yeah, it's probably, probably gonna fizzle out and kind of not stick the landing, and no one will remember it. But we can keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> Don't be like decadence. <laughs> Don't fail I mean, me. And to be fair, um, there have been shows in this same kind of vein that like no one paid any attention to that really flew under the radar yeah. that we really enjoyed, like Kokoku. Oh, no yeah. one remembers Kokoku. Yeah. No one watched Kokoku. I thought it was fairly fucking cool. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty fucking dope. That was a good one. So. And this is like starting from a way higher bar, like animation wise. And, oh like, yeah, Kokoku did not have stellar animation by yeah. any stretch. It's probably why people fucking completely slept on it. Yeah. I don't know, but this, yeah, this is a. Uh, I hope it stays fucking off the wall and just, like, really... Yeah. Just really doesn't Stay give weird. a fuck and just goes nuts. Like, that would be so good. Yeah, I wanted to keep uh... the punk rock vibe of that opening theme throughout the entire series because, like, that is aesthetically what I want. I want fun. I want insanity. I want animation... Ex like, if you're gonna have... If you're gonna have, oh, well-animated show, it's like, just, just fucking blow my mind all the time and just <laughs> fucking just shit out crazy aesthetic shit. Just a real Gonzo sort of uh, yeah. sort of anime, yeah. Gonzo. Remember <laughs> Gonzo? Remember Studio Gonzo? Wow. Doesn't this feel like uh kind of like um Gonkutsuo? Is that the last fucking thing that had this kind of aesthetic to it of like just like fucking fuck it, colors and insanity. <laughs> fuck it, patterns that are literally moving. <laughs> Backgrounds and patterns and colors. Ah! Fuck it. Boof. You have ADHD. Sci-fi yeah, boof! Do. Lights boof! <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Fuck me with your sci-fi! <laughs> and Osaka's fucking dope, and I love Osaka, I so... Mean, yeah. Fucking Osaka style. <laughs> That's probably the gayest thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> Cut that. Bleep it. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I take no responsibility. Look, man. All the fucking anything. Tokyo stands watching Jujutsu Kaisen get fucked. We're, we're in fucking Osaka now, bitch. <laughs> Which is also That's fun in Jujutsu Kaisen because they're all they're all jizzing over Tokyo and all the different right. boroughs. We're like, we went there, we went to Tokyo. TDL. We know how fucking bougie. Uh, what's the, what's it called? Is what's the Rapungi. Point? Rapungi. <laughs> we know how bougie Rapungi is. Yeah, we don't belong in Rapungi. Fucking you got the Gucci store across the street from the Balenciaga. Insanity. <laughs> Balenciaga. <laughs> all right. Um. That wraps up these three anime that we watched. Wow, we're watching anime. I hope you enjoyed us talking about these things. Um, I hope we got more viewers that are Higurashi and Yashihime videos, which no one is fucking watching. Um, please go check those out. They're entertaining, too. Um, support us on Patreon. <laughs> Hey, yeah, plug the Patreon. <laughs> plug the Patreon. I haven't plugged the Patreon in a while. Yeah. Um, where we can fail to deliver bonus episodes on time. <laughs> but there's lots of content on there already. There's probably like fucking 20 hours of shit on there already. There's more all of us talking than you could ever want to listen to. Yeah, you can blow your brains out fucking <laughs> trying to listen to us. Slowly whittle your life away listening yeah. to us just drivel on about things that are completely inconsequential. And check out Cantent. They're going to do their uh, seasonal anime wrap-up soon. And I'm sure they'll have takes on these very same things that we watched. Um, I'm not going to fucking watch similar? every anime that comes out. I don't have the patience or the willpower. Oh, <laughs> so I yeah, will not I be guesting I'm on that episode. I'm not watching every, everything that comes out. Yeah. Sorry. Fuck that shit. 
tell us what else is good in the comments. Okay. Um, what else we're sleeping on. Maybe we'll try it out, but I feel like our docket is already full. <laughs> we, never we already have anything. a bunch of shit we haven't delivered, so yeah. we love you. Bye. Bye.